Hey, this is Jenny Hodges, National Director of Pro-Life Unity. I, tonight, on Tuesday, March 17th, I wanted to clarify some elements of the last two days of video interviews that I have done uh, and monologues. On my Facebook site, under Jennifer Renee Hodges, I have a uh, video just discussing what's going on in um, Atlanta in terms of the pro-life movement. And then on ProLifeUnity.com, I also have an interview with Peter Shin, the president of ProLife Unity, where I talk about uh, a number of topics, including Michael Steele coming out uh, and saying that he's absolutely pro-choice in the GQ interview that uh, went hit the, hit the public uh, last week. So I've had some questions come in, I've had some feedback, and I just wanted to clarify some elements of those um, videos. First of all, in regard to embryonic creation outside the womb, I want to be really clear that, of course, all of life originates with God. It doesn't matter if you bring egg and sperm together in a petri dish or in the uterus. Once those meat and the soul emerges, that life is of God. My point with creator having absolute control over the life and liberty of the subject, or that which was created, uh, is that when you're in a lab and you have uh, full authority to bring together eggs and sperm and create embryos, then you do hold in your hands complete power over those humans. Their life and liberty is absolutely in your hands and at your discretion. And so my point was you are removing uh, the protections of our uh, government, our constitution, our bill of rights that are based on those truths espoused in the Declaration of Independence. and. Um, uh, that's why I believe that embryonic production is intrinsically evil. And it gives birth to a whole host of negatives. Um, so it's really Pandora's box to me. Once you allow that kind of liberty, uh, you know, personal authority, power, discretion, tyranny inside labs and fertility clinics. Furthermore, the issue of Jefferson and why he wrote the Declaration of Independence the way he did. Uh, I did read this book called Slave Nation. Uh, I can't think right now who the author was, but it was a very interesting perspective, kind of looking at the American Revolution through the eyes of the slave trade here. And um, I think uh, a, a case could be made that of the you know advanced civilizations of that era, ours had the most prominent slave trade and, and um, slave labor basis for our economy and, and everything else. It really was an appalling aspect of our country and, and I think it's important. I think we kind of push it aside when we study the American Revolution or the American War for Independence and uh, the establishment of our government and moving forward to the Civil War. I, I don't think that we pay attention to it enough. And it was interesting reading Slave Nation because it gave you a different perspective, a different way of looking at things and how the property held in humans played a role, absolutely, in the careful way in which our founding documents were written. So I would highly recommend that you watch that. The last thing I wanted to address was when I said that Michael Steele was really being treasonous against the American people in his interview, uh, to me, any public leader who's in a position of authority in the United States of America, for that person to come out in strong support of American terrorism, which has brutally murdered 50 million Americans, is high treason against our people. I think we need to be very clear and very real on what prenatal murder is, and it is an absolute denial of the most intrinsic rights granted to those that are image bearers of God. So Michael Steele has committed a gross crime against the people of America. Same as Obama, same as any other leader who comes out and endorses or supports uh, people that are pro prenatal murder, that support it and defend it and, and, and work to enable it. Uh, this is a gross violation of the most intrinsic sense of patriotism uh, that we should all um, engage in. So that's why I use such a strong word for any of you who feel like, oh, Jenny, come on now, that's a little strong. Well, 
if anything, we're just not strong enough in, in how we call out these people. And, and <laughs> you know, maybe maybe we would get it if we lined up prenatal babies and shot them with a gun. Maybe that would, you know, in Atlanta, we're, we're butchering about 500 children a week, sometimes more than that. Um, I guess more than that, because about 35,000 a year that's reported. So, you know, what if we had like a mass ex execution down at the Capitol every week and we just lined up 500, you know, babies and uh, outside the womb, pulled them out of the womb and shot them with a gun, you know, 500 gunshots. Maybe then everyone would wake up. Or if we had a little uh, cremator, cremating uh, oven going down on the Capitol grounds where the babies were ripped from their mom's womb and tossed to tossed into the fire. Uh, to turn into ash, maybe we would get it then. But um, this is absolutely a violent, violent act, and uh, it is it is a horrific stain on Americanism and what it is to be an American. Thank you for your time. Have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon.